They don't want Americans, Canadians, and other Western countries to know what is coming. And that is a plan to intentionally collapse Western society. If you don't believe me, read the plan that's been in the books for over a century, planned out by the Illuminati and penned by Albert Pike back in the 1800s in his three World War predictions. On occasion, though, they get outsmarted by their own game. What was David's hidden message inside the Grey State? And could it be the reason for his death? Perhaps the scariest part of Grey State's conceptual trailer is this character here, who appears to be operating a guillotine. David Crowley was very intentional in this frame of the movie. He added something that I believe he wanted the people to know about. You will see that this terrifying character is wearing something around his waist. It appears to look like an apron. The executioner wears a Freemason apron, complete with the all-seeing eye, the compass, and the two pillars. I do believe David Crowley is trying to tell us something. He is telling us that the organization behind the French and American revolutions, the organization behind the Italian revolution of 1830, the organization that outlined a plan to overtake the Vatican in a document called the Alta Vendita, the organization behind the Trail of Tears and the deaths of thousands of Native Americans under Freemason Grandmaster Andrew Jackson, the organization behind the Ku Klux Klan in the United States post-Civil War and its rebirth in 1915, the organization behind Hiroshima and Nagasaki during 33rd degree Freemason Harry Truman's presidency. These are men with a radical revolutionary agenda throughout the entire world because they worship and follow a radical revolutionary deity, the first to have led a revolt against the Most High Lord. David Crowley knew something, and he was trying to warn the people. The ones behind the FEMA death camps, the guillotines, and the detention of Americans, it's the Freemasons. They're planning a second American revolution. Just don't break the laws and you won't be beheaded. The gentleman in the elevator now is a candid star. These folks who are entering, the man with the white shirt, the lady with the trench coat, and subsequently, one other member of our staff will face the rear. And you'll see how this man in the trench coat <laughs> tries to maintain his individuality, but little by little, he looks at his watch, but he's really making an excuse for turning just a little bit more to the wall. Now we'll try it once again. Here's the candid subject. Here comes the candid camera staff, three of them at least. And uh, this man has apparently been in groups before. We know that we're asking Americans to do a lot right now. So we're asking everyone to be selfless for others so that we can protect those who are most susceptible to this virus. A question I often get asked is why should young people care about the spread of coronavirus? Well, we know that people with underlying medical conditions over the age of 60 are at highest risk, but they've got to get it from somebody. Social distancing is really physical separation of people. It's what we refer to when we ask people to stay at least six feet apart. Not going to bars, not going to restaurants, not going to theaters where there are a lot of people. It all just means physical separation so that you have a space between you and others who might actually be infected or affect you. We all have a role to play in preventing person-to-person -person spread of this disease, which can be deadly for vulnerable groups. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I've ever heard. Now, here's a fella with his hat on in the elevator. First he makes a full turn to the rear, and Charlie closes the door. A moment later, we'll open the door, everybody's changed positions. 